Hi, how's it going everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, if you haven't seen the news recently, the S&P 500 has now dropped more than 20% from their recent high back in January, which means that the US S&P 500 is officially in a bear market. A bear market is defined as a drop of 20% or more from recent highs as opposed to a correction, which is a drop of around 10%. So the S&P 500 was at a high of around 4,800 and then it dropped down to around uh, 3,750, uh, which is down to uh, around 22%. But what do these uh, percentages really mean? Now, it means that people are obviously pessimistic about the future growth of companies, but they're also fancy taglines for the mainstream media to use in headlines to scare people and for the uh, technical traders to practice their um, trading. Meaning technical traders see major percentage drops as potential reversal point for when the market is going to turn around and recover. Now, I have to say, I personally pay attention to uh, some of these as well. And I've come to realize that instead of trying to predict the uh, when the market is going to turn around, I see these major percentage drops as more checkpoints that could potentially be an opportunity to uh, scoop up some positions on the cheap, especially positions in well diversified index funds and some certain good companies. I mean, historically, the overall market has always recovered 100% of the time. So let's say if it's down 20% at the moment, you'll be able to lock in a 20% profit at some point down the line when the market fully recovers. Now, this could be uh, in the next year or even maybe a little bit longer. Now, historically, uh, bear market tends to last between 6 to 18 months. So you really just have to be patient and wait it out. You see, what I've always found interesting is that people have been complaining for years that many of the companies are overvalued and stock prices are too high. But now that things are cheaper, now suddenly everyone is afraid to buy. Again, you have to uh, look at it in a long term view of everything. If we uh, go into the uh, weekly view and we look at the uh, market uh, from the very lows of the pandemic back in 2020, which is around this area, the overall market is up by around 60%, even after a 20% decline uh, over the past couple of months. So that's a 60% return in two years' time, which is around a 30% return uh, per year. Now, if someone gave you an investment that returns 30% per year, you will probably take it in a heartbeat. And I'm not even talking about some promises of crazy returns from a cryptocurrency, such as this thing called Luna, uh, which, I mean, seriously, who would ever believe in a 20% risk-free return of stable coins? Damn those suckers. I mean, seriously. But see, the main problem that I'm facing at the moment is that the exchange rate is just terrible going from New Zealand dollars to US dollars. So this is the current exchange rate at the moment. So we hit around a uh, high of 0.72 uh, US dollars to one New Zealand dollars in 2021. And since then, from pretty much the beginning of the year, we have never got even close to that territory. And currently, uh, New Zealand dollars to US dollars is at a bit of a low at 0.62 US dollars to one New Zealand dollars. So in times of uncertainty with supply chain issues and the conflict that's still going on in Eastern Europe, people tend to stock up on what is perceived as a safe currency, which is the US dollars. Uh, therefore, as more and more people are doing that, uh, is literally driving up the uh, value of the US dollars. And I mean, I haven't even mentioned the uh, crypto winter that we're currently having, where pretty much all the uh, major cryptocurrencies are down. Now, but the point is, stock prices are dropping and everyone is feeling it in their portfolios and retirement funds. In a recent video, I've talked about how we are currently not in a recession, but may very well be facing a recession if interest rates keep on ramping up and the uh, economy keeps on slowing down. Check out that video if you haven't already. Now, I've also mentioned that the stock market is usually a leading indicator of a recession. Now, stock prices tend to drop 
about six months before a recession actually hits, and they tend to recover before a recession actually finishes. I think the current economic environment is really exposing a lot of non-profitable companies because of the、uh, strategy that they use to、uh, expand their company and. Hype up their valuation to a very large scale. So not too long ago, the main strategy of scaling a startup company is to aggressively expand at any cost in order to undermine all your competitors, which of course tend to cost a lot of money,、uh, a lot of marketing, and everything. Now, after you have achieved the、uh, dominant market share, you then try to bring up the cost of your services to actually make your company profitable. The poster child of companies that adopt this strategy include、uh, Uber, Airbnb,、uh, Lime, and、uh, many other scooter companies, and many other that use、uh, user-driven、uh, based apps. The problem is that many of them never reach a stage of profitability, and they really start to struggle when the whole economy is going into a recession. And this is around the time that many of them actually run out of money. And will probably soon become bankrupt. To be fair, credit where credit is due. Airbnb has actually bounced back pretty nicely、uh, after the whole pandemic situation, where they pretty much had no business at all during all the lockdowns and stuff. They have actually bounced back pretty nicely. So where exactly does this leave us? Now all eyes are on the、uh, U.S. Federal Reserve on Thursday when they will be releasing the latest update to the.、Uh, U.S. Federal Reserve interest rates. Now, many people in the market are pricing in a 75 basis point raise,、uh, which is a 0.75 percent raise to 1.75、uh, percent in terms of interest rate. Now, I'm just going to say it here: if there indeed is a 75 basis point raise, or even a less likely 50 point、uh, interest rate. I would say that the market has a significant chance to respond positively, because this is、uh, what something that they have priced in. If the Fed somehow pulls something random out of the bag, we can easily see the market tank again. But the Fed knows that the market wants a 75 point raise. Would they actually do something random to tank the market? Now, if I was a betting person, I would like to think that the、uh, Fed doesn't actually want to、uh, tank the market. Therefore, it leaves the、uh, logical conclusion that the market should bounce back after the Fed announcement. Again, this is just pure speculation.、Um, would it actually happen? We'll just have to wait and find out. Even though the markets are down at the moment, there's no real reason to sell off anything, considering you're still up by more than 60% from the lows that we experienced back in 2020. So the best thing is again to have some cash on hand, have some emergency funds, and just ride this whole thing out.